another First Impression Friday. We are going to be looking at an indie designer today uh, called Gina Renee and her company, Gina Renee Designs. Um, she has a lot of information about this fitting book that she released. I guess it's like a digital book. Um, but she also has a really interesting kind of backstory um, where it illustrates like her experience in the fashion industry, which, you know, makes me feel like she's somebody that, you know, we can trust to draft a pattern correctly. Um, basically, she studied at FIT and then worked in high fashion, moved to California, worked with Oakley and Vans, and then I guess her husband's job maybe, or for some reason they moved to Germany. That's when she started this company. But she does this in addition to working at a sportswear brand where she manages a bunch of pattern makers. So I really do feel like she is going to be able to give us a lot of really great fitting patterns. Um, and I'm eager to see kind of the style and design of them as well. She has quite a few of them and they also kind of run the gamut of, um, sorry, I hope you aren't getting sick. I'm trying to find the link to the, to the patterns. Um, they kind of run the gamut too. There's a lot of like accessory stuff, interesting accessory stuff. So uh, we will um, kind of briefly touch on those. We're not going to spend too, too much time on them. All right. So first up, we have the t-shirt dress pattern. This is a knit dress pattern. It looks like it has a front and back yoke, which is interesting for a t-shirt pattern because mostly t-shirt dress patterns are just like a t-shirt. There's no seaming, no additional seaming, just, you know, the front and the back, um, and sometimes the sleeve. But this one says easy t-shirt knit, I'm sorry, easy knit t-shirt dress pattern, perfect for those wanting to improve their skills with knits. There are simple over the shoulder cap sleeves, no sewn in sleeves to get this simple look. Casual and comfy t-shirt dress pattern is sure to become one of your favorites. It's, it's so comfy that when I come home after I've worn it all day, there's no need to change into my comfy clothes. Plus, this dress can be worn in the fall and winter with a pair of leggings. Okay, so that's what we've got. Interestingly enough, uh, can we zoom? Yes. Okay, good. Um, so you can see what she means there by the little cap sleeves. Cute little dress. It also has a curved hem, which you can see a little bit here. What does this do? Does this do anything? Nope. I was trying to make the pictures bigger, but I don't think I can. Um... Okay, here's a really pretty view of the neckline. It is a little bit wide. Like, I think if you were wearing a normal bra, it might peek out a little bit. Um, but then you also have these little cap sleeves, which are cute. Obviously, you don't... Oh, she is wearing a bra. You can see it here. And you can see it's barely skimming. Um, and if you're not careful, it might peek out. Um, obviously, you don't have to color block. Um, you can do it all in one. Also interesting to me that this becomes part of the arm's eye. I don't know how else I would have thought it would have been done, but uh, that looks like a good enough way to do it that, as any. This has also got to be lined, and that's how you're able to get such a pretty finish on your openings, your um, neckline and your arm eye openings because that little yoke thing is actually two pieces. Oh, cute, there's a little detail here. This is what I think she's gonna bring to the table from her ready to wear experience is little details like this. I kind of tie in the top to bottom. Okay, here is our, it's still not letting, whoa, whoa, whoa. Still not letting me zoom, even there's a plus when I, it just kind of goes somewhere else. So we're gonna, just gonna leave it alone. Um, but it looks like the chest or bust goes from 31 inches to 46 and a half inches. And the hip goes from 34 and a half to 50. So not, I mean, I think it's pretty size inclusive on the lower end, not entirely on the upper end, but certainly not the worst that we've seen either. Um, so something to keep in mind for that as well. Also, is this finished or are these just the, the body measurements? That's something that needs to be clarified as well. Um, okay, so 
that's that. That's the t-shirt dress. I don't know about this for 12 bucks, uh, but, you know, she's able to, you know, charge whatever she wants for whatever reason she wants to. Who am I to judge? I just feel like when, when they're touting easy, 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 uh, um, and kind of like, not shapeless, but, you know, not a lot, not a lot of thought went in. Well, that's just an outsider's perspective. What do I really know about drafting patterns? I know nothing. She should charge $100 for this if she wants to. And let that be that. <laughs> um, but I do think it fits her well. I do think it is a cute design. And I can totally see why you would be wearing this like all summer long. Um, so Oh, and I love the little button here. Instead of buy now, it says so now. That's really cute. I love little details like that. Okay, this is the Bella blouse. You'll feel stylish and sophisticated wearing this blouse or dress. Uh, the Bella blouse pattern has a lovely overlap detail on the shoulders, which flows directly into a tie sleeve closure. Okay. Dress it up or make it casual with the fabrics you select for this versatile sewing pattern. Contrasted binding, no zippers or buttons. Happy sewing. Oh, because the back is tied into a little bow here. Let's look at some of these photos. I'd like to see it. I like to see like head on from the front. Okay, here we are. So you can see the neckline is bound. We've got some darting here. Um, really, really pretty sleeve. I like, I mean, again, this neckline is a little bit wide, which I don't love, but I do love how the shoulder extends to the end of the arm, and then that's where the sleeve is set in. You have a, uh, what do we, it would be a narrower sleeve cap, and in my opinion, that's a little bit easier to sew, rather than trying to get one that goes up and over your shoulder, that's where you have to do a lot of that easing. For the little sleeve design, I'm not entirely sure. I love that. It feels a little kitschy to me for my style. Um, but certainly, I think if you were to wear this, people would comment um, on how cute it is. Because it is cute. It's just a little maybe vintage -y for my taste. Yeah, especially like in a polka dot situation. Um, oh, there it is as a dress. So the dress just extends straight down like a shift dress would. I guess it's nice that the arm, um, band, arm sleeve thing is adjustable. That's kind of cool. Um, okay. So notice that this one, the last, the knit pattern only went up to 2XL. This one goes up to 4XL, which means a bust of 31, so that's the same, up to 54 and a half, and then the hip goes from 34 and a half to 57. So seven ad additional inches um, on the top end here. A lot of bias binding, like a lot. Oh, look at this, suggested drape appearance. That's cool. This is the drape suggestion for the dress top main fabric. The level of drape for the binding should be close to this. Cool. I don't know that that really helps an inexperienced sewist. I mean, are they going to go in the store and like, you know, put fabric around their fist and compare the photos? Maybe as we go on, we'll look at more drape tests and It'll be clearer as to the differences. In my opinion, I like this concept of showing that, but it should be like on a scale where you have like, I don't know, maybe five pictures and lightweight or light drape on one end and heavy drape on another end or vice versa. And then like an arrow or something showing the drape for this one. That way you're, it, you're, it's like relative, like you're comparing it against something. That all by itself, I'm just kind of like, okay, well, that's interesting to know, but how does that really translate? But really cool, cool concept there. All right, so that's it for the Bella blouse and dress. $12.50 here. I'm assuming even though she lives in Germany, these are dollars. Oh, yeah, yeah, duh, USD. Okay, sorry. Um, 
just thinking out loud as I do in my first impression videos. All right, here we've got our classic dirndl dress, a little fit and flare with a gathered skirt. This is sort of like, I mean, if you don't have a pattern like this, you've got to have one. It's just quintessential. Um, this one has some fun details I'll point out, but you'll feel stylish and sophisticated wearing this button down dress pattern, a beautifully fitted bodice gives feminine touch and add to it. Wait, what? The fitted bodice gives a feminine touch to it and the gathered skirt gives it a fun flare. This stylish midi dress, I don't know that I'd call it a midi dress, but okay, is sure to become one of your favorites in your collection. Um, plus the Pollyanna pocket dress. Oh, that's what this one's called. I wish that would say that here. Button down dress. I wish it would say Pollyanna pocket dress or I don't know why are there two names. Um, and then she's just talking about the leggings again. Okay, so things that I like that she didn't point out um, are this sort of squared off neckline. Now it doesn't look super squared off in the drawing, but on her, it definitely is like a rounded square. Um, looking at this, the uh, waistline is sitting right at her waist. I love the pretty arm side. Um, beautiful fitting bodice, just like she said. Cute little skirt, knee length. Um, and a gajillion buttons going down, but you can tell you've got one right at your bust line and one at the waistline. That is how it's done, folks. This one, she's got a little belt on, but you can see too, kind of the shape of the arm side. Really great. Cute, cute, cute. Yeah, the back is scoopier. Pretty. Pretty, pretty. Yeah, this would just be one of those dresses that you could make in so many different fabrics. This one is only the 2XL size range. Um, it is a roomy skirt, though. So if you're pear shaped like me and you're just outside the range for the, your hips, you could probably still get it to work. I just have a little bit less ease in your hips. The bust is really, the bust and waist are really what you have to pay attention to here. Pollyanna pocket dress pattern. Are we not going to get the drape test? No drape test on this one. So, meh. Okay. 14 bucks for that also. All right. Now we have sweater pattern, top sewing pattern, which is also called the A-line Audrey top. You know the feeling when you've sewn something that's exactly how you imagined it to be? For me, that's this top. I'm in love with the silhouette of this sweater sewing pattern. Design your A-line Audrey with a mid to heavyweight knit that has a lot of body and fullness. Choose between <clears throat> a flared sleeve or regular sleeve. Okay. So it's got this really cool funnel neck. Again, we've got the little yoke situation happening. This must be the flared sleeve. I also can't tell. I guess it's just folded under and hemmed. You've got a dolman sleeve, so kind of like a grown on sleeve. And I don't know if this is intentional. The drawing makes it look like the sides are higher, like it's scooped to the side, but this almost looks like the front is a little bit higher than the back as well. I don't know if that was intentional or not. I do like the design of this. I like that funnel neck a lot. I love a grown on sleeve on like a thick chunky sweater knit. Yeah, over some leggings and booties, super cute for a ball. Um, this is the 2XL size range. Oh, and here is your alternate sleeve. So I don't think we're going to need pictures of that, but it's just like a closer fitted sleeve. I also wish she would have included an option without the collar. I feel like that wouldn't have been that difficult to convert the collar to a band. Um, but what can you do? And no drape test on that one either, which I'm looking for because it's so unique. You know, I've never seen that, so... We should be doing that to all the patterns. <laughs> Easier said than done, though, I'm sure. Okay, so this one's 11 bucks. Then we have the Bella 
Did we just look at Bella? Be blouse pattern, Bella, blouse and dress, and then, okay, so I'm going to assume that's the same thing. And we're going to move on to this formal dress pattern. You'll feel amazing in this long woven maxi dress. So pretty. Select your favorite print solid or texture fabric for this elegantly fitted maxi dress sewing pattern. The best styles can be dressed up or down. If you design it with a satin, it become a beautiful bridal gown. Oh, totally. Bridesmaid's gown or prom dress. When you design it with a cotton, it be more casual and worn all summer long. Okay. She doesn't really talk much about the style lines in the description. Man, I wish these photos were bigger. But you can see here from the line drawing, we've got the same little cap sleeve thing that uh, we saw with the knit um, t-shirt dress pattern. And then we go into an empire waist with either two pleats or gather something happening there. And then these really nice long darts that keep it fitted through the waist. We've got the same darts in the back um, and then also some back bodice darts as well. I'm assuming there's a zipper here that gets you on and out of it. And then again with the wide neckline. She really does favor a really pretty wide neckline. Okay, so you can see here that these are actually uh, pleats. Really, really pretty. So good. Again, with the fit of the arm side, how it fits her body and not gaping at her chest or anything. I'm not surprised at all that they fit her perfectly, especially I'm assuming this is Gina. <laughs> um, and so especially if she's making these clothes for herself. I mean, I got to imagine she knows how to fit herself. All right. So this is the 2XL size range. Um, again, a little bit forgiving in the hip, the bust is really going to be, it's a little bit forgiving in the waist too. The bust is really going to be the one thing to pay attention to with fit here. Starting, or jumping off point anyways. All right, so that one's 14 bucks. Cute. All right, now we have classic dress sewing pattern. So this is going to be like your pencil dress. Um, classic silhouetted dress, uh, she just talks about fabric a lot, perfect travel dress because it compacts well, like that's kind of random. Um, she had to make it in stripes and polka dots. Okay. So again, no information on the design there, just lots of like lifestyle type stuff, which I guess is okay for a description, but if you're newer to sewing, would you be able to look at this and really know what's going on? I don't know. So this one has more of a bateau neckline. So you can see how it's like wide still, but higher up. Um, really skinny, like shoulder seam, shoulder depth there. We've got a bust dart. We've got a waist dart. And then I think these are going to be little pleats. Um, and then the belt is part of the design. And then in the back, you've got some waist starts and this little pleat, this little kick pleat or bent. Yeah, that one reminds me of, um, gosh, what is that TV show where the girls run it in the opening credits? She's like running all around town, Mary Tyler Moore. That's what that one reminds me of. So yeah, so she made this in a striped fabric and then utilized this center front seam which is why this is making a V and then the skirt is straight up and down. Oh, you can really get an idea of those darts here. Really nice. I want to see, oh, here's her polka dots. Okay. This fabric seems to be a little bit lighter weight too. All right. So just the two XL size range on this one. All right, so that is the classic dress. That's true. Um, just like the dirndl, this is one of those that you need to have in your arsenal. And I want to point out that even though they might seem similar, this one has the princess seams, whereas this one has the darted bodice. Also, you get two different skirts, two different necklines. So they are very different, even though they're both like fitted bodices with like shaped skirts. 
Okay, now we have the simple dress pattern. This must be like some kind of SEO thing. That's why we're doing that. I don't, I cannot think of any other reason why they would be titled this way. But this slim fitted knit dress pattern is sure to become a favorite of yours. Make it, you'll make this a versatile style in your wardrobe. So again and again, because it's so comfortable. All right. So very straightforward. This is a fitted t-shirt dress with a set in sleeve wham bam thank you ma'am nothing else really going on there is a little bit of a flare to the skirt but other than that it's fitted kind of has that wide narrow but toe neckline again although that one doesn't look nearly as flared as the ones of her out uh oh wrong photo um, and then this one only goes to extra large. I do feel like her size range though, like reading extra large, uh, how am I trying to say this? Her extra large is a little bit bigger than other people's extra large. Does that make sense? Yeah, little t-shirt dress. I'm imagining you can also leave those sleeves off and like bind the arm size. Um, so again, another kind of like staple design. We have the Penelope pants. Tapered pants sewing pattern. The new Penelope pants pattern is perfect mix between comfort and style. The elastic weight line, waistline makes it super comfortable, and that means there's no zipper to sew for these adorable pants. They come in so many options. High waist, standard waist with frill, which I think is also paper bag waist, without frill, short length, capri length, full length with cuff and without cuff. Bonus, free fitting guide and free pattern hack to turn this into a pants base pattern sloper block pattern. Whew. Okay, a lot to unpack there. So I am hoping that these are the low rise, which she's calling standard. Um, these are the pants with the cuff, I think. But yeah, you've got this option for frill. You've got these patch pockets. Did she say it was elastic waist? It has the yeah, elastic waistline. And then you have the little belt with the bow. Oh, and there's the shorts. Gosh, I cannot get over that low rise. I just inherently cannot wear those. Um, that is like the widest part of my belly. I would never wear elastic over that. Um, and quite honestly, I haven't seen any clothing made like that in quite some time that low. Maybe she just has like a really long torso. But this proportion to me feels so much more natural where it's sitting. It's this to me is what should be standard. Um, the other one should be low and then high would be like an inch above this. But and then she turned her pockets inside out and created like a funky design. I think this is the capri length. I do appreciate, though, that she made so many options to show us in these photos I was kind of worried we were only going to get one, but I mean, come on, look at that fit, guys. Pretty bang on fit on those pants. So mix and match the options. I would 1000% check the rise on, like I would just eliminate the standard rise altogether and then check the, what she's calling the high rise for sure. Um, and then this one goes up to the 2XL um, size. Oh, drape test. Oh, she has the same picture. So that doesn't really help that much. The black and white pants I made. 
from a standard 100% cotton, you can see those pants have more structure and a little more fullness at the, yeah, 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 yeah. That's helpful because you can go back and look. Um, above amounts include all these other things. Okay. All right. Short sewing pattern. She covered up like the most important part, which I want to see close up, but I really can't. But I'm guessing that the fit looks great. I mean, it looks great from here. Um, but its pockets might be a little bit shallow, but <laughs> that's also because they're so low rise. My goodness. Yeah, I think they look pretty good. All right. So those are her Penelope pants. Now, these are the shorts we just saw. And again, I'm thinking that this is all just like for SEO. People are searching short sewing pattern. They, she wants this to show up, which is why it's getting two separate listings. Yeah, um, kind of a little, not confusing, just a little bit like odd. Um, okay, so here is one of the accessories that I was talking about. It's a hooded infinity scarf pattern. I have literally no experience making those. Um, but it sure does look warm. Um, so you guys go check that out if that's something you're interested in. I gotta imagine it's really handy. I just don't live in a climate where I would ever need that much coverage of anything. <laughs> I'll be sweating in like five seconds. All right, so sweatshirt sewing pattern off the shoulder top, 10 bucks. I like the pricing on that. You'll love the attractive neckline of this sweatshirt pattern. It's the best dress it up look while still being super comfy. Um, wear it as a higher cowl type drape or fold all the way over for an off the shoulder look. Okay, so yeah, it's just your basic t-shirt or sweater with a band. It does have a band on the bottom and then kind of long sleeves. Um, so if you like your sleeves super long or you have long arms, that might be good for you. But yeah, then you just have this fold over top. I would love to know like in the description if there's any extra reinforcements for this. Like how does this stay up or down when you raise your arms? What happens? That's my biggest pet peeve with these kind of like fold over tops. Yeah, like at this point, I think she's kind of been moving around a lot, taking a lot of photos and then it starts to creep up a little bit and back to the beginning I don't even think we got size charts or anything yeah no okay no additional information oh oh lord have mercy there's all this down here okay pin me with the Pinterest button um all right so this pattern includes women sizing excess to 2XL, a chest range of 31 to 42. And then she talks a little bit more about the fabric here. Why is there all this white space? My goodness, I just assumed there was nothing else down there. Okay, next up we have t-shirt pattern, $9.50. So we're going to go through these next two pretty quickly. They're pretty much the same. This is just your basic v-neck t-shirt pattern, um, two necklines, three sleeve lengths. So we have the v-neck was the first one. This one's more of a like jeweled neckline. We've got short sleeves. We've got three quarter sleeves. And that's all we're getting for photos. No line drawing. Um, maybe the other sleeve length is long. I'm assuming long. And this is extra small to 1X, 31 inches to 42 inches. Choose between short three quarter or long sleeves as well as a boat neck or a V-neck. But a uh, boat neck is also known as the bateau neckline. So again, we've got that long and narrow um, neckline that she's sort of favored thus far. This one is the flared t-shirt. So rather than being fitted, it does flare out at the bottom. Um, Flared hem covers up the tummy area. Such a fat, flattering fit. Easier sewing pattern and perfect for those beginning to sew. 
you may make it in many colors. So she doesn't talk about options with this one, but we've got that scoop neck again. There's a bit of a higher neck with a cap sleeve. There's a long sleeve version. You've got a band for the neckline and then there's like a folded under hem for the sleeve. All right. And then light to mid-weight knit or jersey fabric. Extra small to extra large. Choose between short or long sleeves as well as a scoop or crew neckline. So there you go. Two basic t-shirts, both $9.50. Now we've got a midi skirt pattern. I don't know about calling these midi. I guess I would have called it below the knee. To me, midi is like mid-calf, but maybe that's just a misnomer. I don't know. What is midi? Um, okay, perfect A-line shape. The skirt rests close to the true waist, and there are three pleats in the front and back. Perfect for dressing for style a bit. And give it a twirl. Okay. Again, this is another style that I just don't really see that much anymore. I remember when I first started sewing, man, pleated skirts were like the jam. And you would make them out of your art gallery <laughs> quilt fabric and just like, just twirl your heart away. Um, I don't see a lot of people wearing these anymore, but also I feel like her true waist is up here, the top of these little fingers, and this sits closer to her high hip. So I think she just has um, a fit that she favors a little bit lower. Um, easy enough to fix for someone like me, but if you are a novice sewist, especially when it comes to fitting, you may be a little bit confused as to why your skirt seems so big. Um, if you're trying to wear it up at your natural waist when it was designed to be worn below that. Um, this goes up to the 2XL size range, and that's it for the photos. Um, let's see. Special, okay, okay, yeah, so not a ton more information down here. I guess the fabric is nice to know, but pleated skirt. Okay, now you've got these fingerless gloves, another fun accessory. Um, this cape pattern we'll take a quick look at. The fact that it's 10 bucks is, is very interesting to me. Um, oh, it did look, okay, so if you look at it, it looks like it has sleeves, which I thought was the coolest part, but really it's, she just has it tucked in kind of. Um, I would wear that. That's really cool. Um, okay, so stylish cover up. I've created this super unique women's pleated cape sewing pattern, which you're going to wear a lot. You can design it to be an everyday cape by selecting a casual woven fabric or dress it up for an evening dress or bridal cover up using satin or velvet. Totally. Totally. Okay. So you've got the cape, which buttons here with button and loop closures. And then there's like all this draping around the neck, which I think is kind of the coolest part. Um, Capes are perfect for like tropical climates like where I live because they are warm, but you still get kind of like a breeze, you know, so it's not totally um, like you're just not you're not going to like sweat it out in that. There must be something here that's not on the line drawing that's making it look like it has an actual sleeve and bodice. Right? Doesn't that look like there's some stitches there or something holding those two things together? I think it looks really great. Really great from all sides. There's got to be something there. Her little hound's tooth is so pretty too. Cute. I would make that in like a black wool of some kind. Um, I wonder if it's lined. She didn't mention anything about a lining up in here. I'm guessing no, but I don't know how that neckline is constructed. Maybe it would be easy to add a lining. Oh, four lining. Here we go. And you need just about as much as you need of the main fabric. So yeah, 
gotta assume it's fully lined. Love that. Um, this is a one size fits most pattern and it's great for sizes extra small to large. If you choose to not do stitching to separate a sleeve, okay, so there is some stitching there, and extra large will also work for this pattern. So it's because of this measurement through the through the bodice here, I think is the reason why um, it the stitching wouldn't work for an extra large. Okay. I kind of wish it weren't one size fits all because I like how it fits her. I don't want it to be any baggier or tighter on me. You know? But, all right. Maybe it's easy to like size up. I don't know. I'd have to look at it. Now we have a hooded cape. Also 10 bucks. You can design your own hooded cape. Oh, by selecting woven fabrics. Okay, with nice drape. This lined cape can be cozy with a fleece lining or have a standard lining, which is also great for summer nights. It can be worn throughout the year. So you, God, these, this picture is too small. I can't even see what's happening. So you have your cape with your pointed front and back. You have the hood. You have like a front kangaroo pocket and little slits for your arms to come through. I don't know if I like the point in the front. Um, I don't really know if I like the point in the back. <laughs> if I'm being totally honest, I don't know about a center front and back points personally, but mid, mid to heavyweight woven fabric, like a wool or wool blend. And then talks about the lining again. And then it's, again, it's a most, uh, one size fits most pattern. Okay, now we have a simple cape pattern, an infinity shawl. I actually have one of these. Is this knit? Easier sewing pattern for those beginning. Yeah, sewing clothes with knits. I have one of these. It was like originally like 68 bucks. I got it in like one of those, I don't know if it was FabFitFun or whatever it was. Um, it made from bamboo rayon jersey knit as a like beach bathing suit cover-up thing. Um, I haven't worn it much to be honest with you, but I do know that this is like expensive and you know out there in the ready-to-wear world somewhere. Um, let's see about her. Oh no, it's the wrong picture again. Okay. Oh, so, okay, yeah, right. So it can be worn a lot of different ways. You can wear it over your head. You can wear it as this shawl. I've also worn it as a skirt, but you have to, like, tuck it into something. So, like, I'll tuck it into my bathing suit bottoms. Well, mine looks a little bit different than that one. But, nonetheless, same concept. I'm sure this is a one size situation. Yep. All right. Again, with these accessories, we're kind of just going to skip through them a little bit. All right. Now we've got a maxi dress, halter dress. Um, this is a very easy halter dress pattern, and it's perfect for that beginner sewing project. This is a, um, what do we used to call them? Pillowcase dress. Who remembers that from like, eight, 10 years ago. Um, basically squares of fabric with a little, uh, casing made here. You feed the drawstring through and that's how you, that's how you make it. And then this one has a side slit as well. She has hers belted. I think that this shaping in the line drawing, it might be a little bit misleading, I'm pretty sure these are just rectangles. Well, rectangles with little trapezoids on the top. Oh no, the wrong picture again. Um, and this one she's tied with the same, maybe the same situation she's got at the neckline. 
It is very, very simple to sew. And if you have a really beautiful, large print like hers, this is the best way to use that because it, there's just not a lot of like seams cutting it all up. All right. Beautiful fit through here though. I mean, that's this is the hardest part I think for dresses like this is you don't want it to be too low. You don't want it to cut in too much. Um, this kind of toes that line pretty good. All right, now we've got this knit maxi dress pattern, which it looks a lot like that formal dress pattern. Um, you've just got the more like spaghetti straps um, into the empire waist gathered skirt and then it kind of falls from there. Let me see the back. The front has a pretty deep scoop. Um, the back, not so much. That's probably like a one and a half inch strap there, but it does seem to be concealing her bra straps well enough. The, the filter on this or whatever, whatever's making it look like really yellow kind of makes it hard to see. Um, actually that's probably thinner than that. I do think she's wearing a bra and it's nicely concealed unless there is a, um, a, uh, like shelf bra inside the dress. This goes up to 2XL. There's the back. Okay. Let's see if there's any mention a uh, long maxi dress every day during the spring and summer months. You'll love the gathered waistline. And then, no. Okay. Okay. Um, yep, and just one fabric. So maybe not, but maybe the straps are drafted. Just the straps in the opening are drafted so that it just perfectly conceals your bra straps. I don't know. Okay, so that's the Knit Maxi. Not so now, we want next. Um, 12 bucks, good price for that. This is a maxi skirt. Um, I think we have some bias being cut on the bias here, which you guys know I love. The perfect maxi skirt sewing pattern for you to design your own fabric combination. There are a few cut lines that will make super cute color blocking. You can choose a stripe and have very interesting plays on the stripe directions, which offers a very unique design. Okay. Oh, you'll also feel so, you'll feel so flattering in this women's maxi skirt because of its shapely fit up top and nice flare at bottom. Okay. So here are the lines. I'm sure you've seen like little satin versions of this out in the wild before. Very, very classic skirt design. Um, again, she has hers sitting, again, that's a lot closer to her high hip than it is her waist. And then as she was saying, there's a lot of play with stripes going on. And you can't see the front ever, but I'm pretty sure this is this one's on the bias and the front one is also on the bias. So it's it's an interesting design. Not everybody I don't think can can pull that one off. Um, I did want to see XS to XL. Midweight jersey, and then no fabric requirements. I also wanted to see there's got to be some kind of elastic or something in that waist, right? But no mention of that. All right, we've got yoga pants, classic yoga pants with the sort of ruched band. Um, Designed with a gathered waistband detail so you can feel stylish. 
You'll no longer feel like you're wearing a pair of bra sweatpants at home. And I think there's just the one, like, uh, I guess it would be boot cut, maybe straight cut. Yeah, you can see how low these sit on her hips. Um, I guess I'm trying to think, where would I want my yoga pants to fit? Especially with a gathered waistband like this, I think I would, would want them this low. Um, and then you have like the flared leg or, I, I don't know, straight leg. That's a lot of gathering at the, at the waist though. You could reduce it, I guess, by making that piece of fabric narrower. And this one goes up to 2XL. Oh, there she is doing a sort of difficult yoga pose. Yeah, I just don't know how else you'd style it. You wouldn't want there to be, like, too, too much fabric, you know, with the gathered waistband. I mean, I'm not really going to wear a crop top that shows my belly button. Even in yoga class, I don't think I would feel comfortable doing that. I wouldn't tuck a shirt in. They're too low. I guess I would, I would raise it. I would increase the rise so it sat more at my natural waist and then wear like a looser crop top I think I don't know it's hard, it's hard I'm having a hard time imagining myself in these pants all right twist it your way sweater sewing pattern infinity cardigan twist this cardigan your way make it into an infinity scarf or cardigan or or Wait, what? Make it into an infinity scarf cardigan or twist it at the front waist. You can also tie it or add hook and eye closures if you want it to lay more smoothly. I don't really understand. Oh. Tied around the neck. Maybe she'll give us one of those. Oh, that one's tied around the bum so yeah my mind cannot comprehend how this is drafted <laughs> like at all um but it looks cool I just is it confusing to put on also I gotta say I don't love 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 this looks kind of sloppy and the one at her butt looks a little like a tail feather I guess you could flip it under and tuck it in so I'm thinking that these are just long if they weren't tied they would just come out long and end like little straps and then depending on how you twist it and tie it either around your neck or around your back would determine the two things. But also, is there not an arm side? Like a like a set-in sleeve? How does that work? I can't see anything in these dark photos, that's for sure. No, there's a seam there. Okay. Just not in the line drawing. Okay. Next up, we have fingerless glove pattern. Cute and interesting. Then we've got a bunch of headbands and hats. Now, I'm not going to go over these because I just, other than, that's cute, that's cute. I don't really know what else I would say about them. But for four bucks, I think they're priced right. I do think they're cute. Going to keep your ears warm, yada, yada. These hats are like, getting my wheels turning. I have been like slightly daydreaming about making a hat, like a fashion hat for a couple of years now and haven't pulled the trigger because I haven't ever really seen one that I'm like, 
oh, that's cute. But look at this one, so cute. This one in a different fabric, I, I for whatever reason, I just, I'm like allergic to chevron. I don't know if it was because it was so popular when I first started sewing. Chevron is also the design of the fabric that I used on my very, very first fail, my very first sewing fail. So maybe it's like stuck with me because of that. But I do think this in like a solid fabric or like a, um, maybe even some kind of, um, what's that stuff called? That's like, oh, it's like woven straw kind of shoot raffia. That's not it. You know what I'm talking about? Maybe if you could make it out of that, that would be really cute. Um, I love the design of this one, the newsboy design without this. Um, and even the flat cap is cute. I don't know, you guys, should I make one? <laughs> and then we have some more fingerless gloves, which I never really understood fingerless gloves. Like for me, the thing that gets cold are my actual fingers. Like I don't need to keep my palms warm but that's just me and I don't have a lot of experience in cold climates either so <laughs> now we have this men's infinity scarf pattern which I don't really understand why it's for men I think it could be for anybody um, and then a slouchy beanie hat and then this is that same skirt as before okay so those are the designs and I really hmm my thoughts on this are that Whereas she's probably a very, very talented um, pattern drafter. And I think you can pretty much guarantee we're going to get, you know, a really good fit with some of her help and tips, assuming that they are in the patterns as well as like her fitting book. There's a lot um, missing in terms of the information that's available for in order for me to feel like I'm making a purchase that is that I'm going to, you know, not all the information is there. Some listings have certain features that other listings don't like, and I get it. I totally get it. She's doing this like on the side, not necessarily like part-time. She's probably spending a lot of time on it. Um, but the website and all the, these little details I'm picking out are probably the last thing on her mind. And I get that. But for me to spend my money, I want to feel like I know exactly what I'm getting. I know what I need in order to make the pattern. I need all of that information. Um, also, I'll say that most of the designs are pretty basic. Um, very simple. She indicated that, you know, good for beginners and all of this. There are some that stand out to me. Um, this maxi dress and the woven version, both I can see myself wearing and making and I don't have a ton of already in my um, pattern stash and then also this little cape if I could feel a little bit more confident about the sizing um, it sounded a little bit like yeah maybe it'll fit you <laughs> because I'm on the top end of her size range especially in the lower portion and especially because I love the fact that it's sewn down to make it look like it has an actual sleeve. Um, I would just want to make sure that even if I, even if it wasn't going to fit as it is, I would want to make sure that the, that I could easily make it bigger if I needed to. Um, I can't imagine that that would be difficult, but a little bit more confidence in the listing would make me feel a little bit better about that. But let me know what you guys think of these patterns. Um, also, let me know if you guys have ever made any of Gina Renee Designs patterns before. Um, that is infinitely helpful to me, to other people who are reading through the comments. Um, if anything I mentioned, you know, that alluded to what might be included with the patterns, um, you know, because you've sewn them, please, please, please let us know because that makes it easier or that just, you know, gives us the information that we are looking for. So that is going to do it for me today, y'all. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all very soon. Bye.